Miguel Gorgrinder of Chicago Domination Fest. Uh, so give us a short summary of where CDF began. Well, CDF began uh, just a couple short years ago, but it, uh, its origins kind of go back to uh, another festival I used to run called the Chicago Metal Devastation Fest that ran back from 2005 to 2007. Uh, it was more of a, of a local, smaller uh, festival that uh, kind of had bigger plans and just never really got traction and kind of just lost its way. And so that died off and uh, took a couple couple years away from the fest scene, kind of uh, think things over and you know figure figure out what I really wanted to do with this whole thing. And uh, then one time I uh, was sitting around working on a on a festival flyer that it was meant to be a complete joke. Um, mm -hmm. And I put on all these ridiculous bands, kind of like a dream lineup, if you will. Yeah. And from that, like, I, I put it on Facebook, and it, it got a ridiculous re reaction to the whole thing, which blew me away. So then I kind of really seriously considered kind of giving this whole fest thing another try again. So the first year I, I kind of put this thing together, I was like, well, I'm going to, you know, put something together that's, uh, you know, small, but uh, still is going to make some sort of an impact. Um, and that's how, you know, CDF1 began. I went out and found myself, you know, some, some really badass bands. And that's been the whole, you know, mythos behind this whole thing is, you know, all about quality over quantity. What is the biggest challenge of putting on a fest of this magnitude? It's a crazy amount of planning that goes into this whole thing. Uh, it's usually a process that, that can take literally an entire year to put this entire thing together. Um, there's, there's a lot of things to consider. Financially, you know, you have a certain budget that you have to stay within to ensure that you don't get yourself into any unnecessary issues uh, with, you know, going over budget and then not being able to cover, you know, the, the festival end of things with, with the ticket sales. That's a big concern, you know, obviously, as much as I want to <clears throat> take this to the next level and really grow it out and just, you know, make it as big as I possibly can, there's certain limitations that I have to work within to really keep it grounded, but still at the same time, make it fun for everybody. Okay, so what is uh, what was the highlight of last year's event? I would say, for me personally, the biggest highlight was not necessarily the show itself, but more the metal family atmosphere that, that really came together at that thing. Um, I mean, it was literally people from all over the world that came out to, to see this thing, and to me that was the biggest sign of gratitude I could ask for is, is to have literally, you know, hundreds of people there that I knew in some way, shape, or form, and everybody's just having a great time. Awesome. So name some of the colleagues or sponsors, uh, vendors, for this year's uh, festivity. Well, my, my main partner in the festival, uh, his name is Jesse Denton. Um, he's been working with me since last year, and uh, he's, he's bringing, you know, uh, different uh, flavor to the table when it comes to you know the the amount of work that uh, gets gets put out by me um, so he helps out a lot with um, with the day-to-day -day stuff and you know getting us out to a wider audience um, as far as the actual like sponsors and things like that uh, we have uh, two brothers is coming back this year nice um, I remember them from last year yeah you know I'm not I'm not really sure to what extent they're gonna be involved to be honest but uh, it uh, last year they provided a whole bunch of awesome free beer for the bands nice, and so the beer will be flowing for sure <laughs> yeah, absolutely and then of course we got the uh, cruelty cabinets is gonna be uh, one of our main sponsors once again they're gonna be providing all the bass and guitar cabinets for all the bands to use throughout the whole festival so yeah looking forward to you know getting some more sponsors on board eventually you know but it's gonna be a step-by-step -step process to eventually get there all right how have the fans responded to this venue the, the wire compared to the previous locations nothing but great things uh, I mean everybody that I got a chance to talk to during the fest last year was blown away by the 
you know, professionalism of the, uh, the wire. Um, everything could not have gone really a whole lot better than it really did. Um, the staff that worked there handled it, uh, you know, with their A game. And, you know, they were just on top of it. I mean, when it comes to, you know, venues that do these kind of events, you know, you, you don't get the, you know, the, the kind of uh, feel that uh, this place provides. Uh, they're just really open and receptive to everything, which is really fucking cool, and I look forward to continue working with them. Uh, to help some of the people out, because people are traveling from uh, many parts of the world, um, do you know of what kind of hotels and accommodations are around in the area for these folks, in case they're, they're looking for a place to stay? Yeah, I mean, uh, unfortunately, there's, there's really not a whole lot in the way of hotels right in front of the venue, unfortunately, but... Uh, about 10 minutes away uh, from the venue, there's uh, a Best Western, which uh, kind of became more or less the unofficial uh, hotel of the festival last year. That was where all the big parties were happening. I expect that to be the same thing this year. Uh, gonna try to work out some sort of a deal with, uh, with the hotel to see if we can get some discount rates uh, for festival attendees and band members and things like that. Um, We'll, we'll release all that information, you know, as we get closer to the actual show date and things like that. Uh, so definitely, you know, pay attention to the Facebook uh, page and uh, our event page, you know, and as soon as we have that information available, we'll definitely put that out there for the fans. Sounds good, sounds good. Uh, what are the advantages of booking bands a year in advance? Well, the advantages are that it literally takes a whole year to, to plan this whole thing out, as I mentioned before. Um, it's just uh, impossible to really think that you would be able to book, you know, a festival on this level with only a couple months time. Um, it's something that would probably, you know, end in disaster if, if you did it too soon. Uh, so, I mean, it, especially when you're dealing with international bands and uh, things like that, uh, you have to really, you know, plan things far in advance to, you know, make sure that things, you know, work out the way that you hope that they do. Even then, you know, I mean, hiccups are normal, you know, bands will cancel and things will happen, but I mean, that's just part of how things work out. All right. Uh, so I noticed you decided to expand this fest to three days instead of the usual two days. Is there any reason for that? It's just all about growth. Um, realistically, at the end of the day, I want to take this festival, you know, to the biggest and uh, baddest point that I can take it, really, uh, within my limitations. Uh, will I ever consider going four days? Probably not. I mean, that's, that's just ridiculous. But right, right. Uh, I think three-day format is probably where it's at and probably will, where it will stay for the future should we continue to do them from here forward. And uh, at this time, where can people purchase tickets for the event? Tickets aren't available yet. Uh, we plan to have them available probably uh, in about a month or so, uh, so right, uh, right around the end of February. Okay. Um, once, once we have all that information, again, you know, our, our Facebook is, is probably the most uh, up-to-date uh, source of information for all that stuff. Um, we'll probably be, once again, selling tickets through our Big Cartel page. Uh, that's going to be probably our only official source for tickets through us, by us. Uh, there's, uh, of course, you can also, you know, order tickets through the venue's website as well. Uh, but more than likely, we'll, we'll be handling most of that directly through us. And what, what, what would the price be? For the, or is it going to be early so, or special? So there's a couple price points. Um, single day tickets, we're, we're talking about uh, 35 uh, per day. Um, if for whatever odd reason you're coming out only on Thursday, that's just a $20 ticket. Uh, we're going to have two day passes available for $60, and then um, the standard three day pass is going to run 80 and then we're going to have the VIP package, of course, which was really popular last year and sold out. Uh, that one's going to be 110, but it includes all three days of the festival. You get a big gigantic poster flag, a regular size poster, and the official fest T-shirt and the laminate that allows you to go anywhere you want in the venue. So it's a really cool deal. Uh, a lot of people have been really receptive towards, and I'm sure it's going to sell out again real quick this year. Very good. Very good. Uh, and then the last question for the interview for you, are there plans for Chicago Domination Fest 5? <laughs> Possibly. We'll see. Um, 
it's it's one of those things that I can only take a year at a time. You know, I mean, am I am I going to say that I have plans? Sure. You know, I mean, I do. Um, I got bands in mind for the next one um, because it's it's getting crazy. Like, I mean, when you're working on this level, you know, you you get hit up by you know all these bands from all over the world that just want to come out and you know because they hear all these great things about the fest and um, so yeah, there, there's plans. Uh, whether they actually end up happening or not depends on the success of this year. Awesome. Thanks for taking the time for an interview. Anytime. Thanks.